How you doing? This is Sam Tolley with In Him First, where we view the world through the lens of Jesus Christ. We do not view Jesus Christ through the lens of the world. I found that many times when you have critics, sometimes they help you uh, more than they hurt you. And they present questions and, and, and opportunities to teach more. And so I started a series of answering my critics, and this would be number three. And this is a follow-up on my previous video about why I talk about abortion so much. I would say, maybe I should name this um, video. Uh, it's not that hard of an answer, or the answer isn't hard. At any rate, uh, this person wrote some comments. And I'm going to share the comments on the screen so you can read them word for word. But the genesis of this video was because of a mime uh, attributed to John MacArthur, Pastor John MacArthur. I don't know if Pastor MacArthur made this mime or not. But I believed uh, and agree with the concept that was stated in the mime. And it said at this, excuse me, it said this. If you're a Christian, you cannot vote for a person or party that slays babies in the womb. Now, I have absolutely no problem with that in mind. But this person um, responded like this. So, can one vote for a person or party that prefers to slay them after they come out of the womb? This sounds like something I would accept or expect from maybe an atheist, an agnostic, a secularist. But this particular person claims to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And a friend of this friend chimed in, <laughs> replied to the above question. Well, I said to myself, this is another opportunity to share with everyone how I feel about a question like this, how I feel about abortion, how I feel about defending the unborn. So I was more than willing and more than ready uh, to try to reply. But based on the initial statement of, so can one vote for a person or party that prefers to slay them after they come out of the womb, I believe this person had three suppositions. Uh, the first one is she presupposes that the party accused of killing babies in the womb is a Democratic Party. To which I say that is correct. Uh, not only does it historically bear out that the Democratic Party uh, believes in killing babies in the womb, they are proud of it. They are unwavering in their commitment to it. And if you pay any attention to what Democratic leaders throughout this nation say, whether they're presidential candidates or, or the Speaker of the House or, or representatives in Congress and most uh, governors and, and so on, they are absolutely for killing babies in the womb. They like to call it pro-choice. I like to call it pro-death, because the baby has no choice. Her second presupposition is that um, the party that believes or is committed to killing babies or letting babies die after they come out of the womb is a Republican Party. To that supposition, I say it's completely false. There's no evidence for it. There's no paper trail for it. There's, this is just another lie that's been hashed up to try to justify evil. You know, I equate this lie with the one about the Democrats and Republicans switching sides in the, uh, in the late 60s during Nixon's term, where all the Republicans became uh, Democrats and all the Democrats became Republicans. And that justified being a Democrat is because all the racists are now Republicans and all the good people are now Democrats. Like for, for some 
weird, warped reason, the winners of the Civil War, the winners of the rights uh, to free the slaves, would want to become the losers. I, I equate that with that, but we'll get into that a little bit further on. The third supposition that I believe this person has is that both political parties are flawed, both political parties have issues, both political parties are not perfect and have sinners, therefore we should just look at both political parties the same. We shouldn't really hold variance against one or the other to, to the degree that I do. I, be I believe this is the position she and many liberal leftist people try to take now. I believe uh, also that that is a step forward on their part. And let me explain why. Because previously, when I would say the word Republican, they would say evil. Now they still think Republican evil, but they can no longer hide uh, the history of the Democratic Party. They can no longer hide the fact that the Democratic Party was a party of the Ku Klux Klan, who was the enforcement arm of the Democratic Party. Those were the people that forced slaves to vote Democrat or die, or be tortured, or be harassed, or be terrorized. Uh, she, they cannot no longer hide behind the fact that the Democratic Party is the party or was the party of Jim Crow and segregation. All that stuff. All the things that many people like me grew up thinking it was from the Republican Party was the Democratic Party because the news media didn't teach us the truth, the schools didn't teach us the truth, and the Democrats constantly lied about the truth, and the Republicans for the most part, didn't say anything about the truth. And so they were left waving in the wind. We were left believing that the good were bad and the bad were good. So now that since there are people like me that get out there and tell the truth, that show evidence for the truth, that make people realize, hey, the Democratic Party wasn't your friend. So the best they can do now is say, well, you know, they're both corrupt. Both parties got issues. Well, both parties do have issues, but both parties do not have this issue. Um, so, when I was getting ready to answer the initial response, um, my protagonist supplied an addendum. And this addendum gives a clearer view of her thinking, and the thinking of many like-minded leftist liberals. So let me read it, and then I'm going to try to break it down section by section. Generally speaking, politically, the same folks who use the banner of pro-life really mean pro-birth and aren't convicted enough to tell the truth. And generally speaking, those same people who complain after babies get here and having to use tax dollars to help support them. And again, generally speaking, those are also the same folks who don't care if children starve, live in poverty, or substandard housing, or are locked up in cages. Those circumstances also lead to death. Thus, my question, hard question, slash answers are rarely part of the thinking in some people who is simply driven by binary politics and caring about a candidate winning. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was some of the most barbaric logic and thinking I've ever heard of. I mean, 
I want you to notice something. See, this is where I, I try to help people think. Think beyond your emotions. Think beyond um, which, how you're expected to think. To look at a bigger view. The person that wrote this, the person that claimed that pro-life really means pro-birth, and we aren't convicted enough to tell the truth, and that, and that really will allow for babies to die after they're born. This person showed absolutely in this document and in previous statements, and I have been dealing with this particular person for years, not once, not one time can I think of when this person showed compassion for the unborn. Regardless of what you think about me, regardless of what you think about the Republican Party, regardless of what you think about conservatives, this person didn't demonstrate one sentence, one iota of compassion for the unborn. And this person claims to be a child of Christ. Um, now, if I accepted the premise that she presented, which I don't, and, and if I was that child in the womb, or say if you were that child in the womb, her compassion, which I say is no compassion, is to let that kid get killed in the womb. Now, if I, if I accepted her premise that Republicans and conservatives don't care about babies once they're born, and I'm the baby in the womb and I have an opportunity to speak, which none of them can, which is why folks like me try to speak for them. I, well, I mean, look, I got a choice of dying right now in this womb or being born and having a shot at living. At least I have a shot if I can get the heck out of this thing. But her lack of compassion, her lack of thought, and people that think like her would rather, uh, I guess they justify killing the baby in the womb because they think that people like me will let them die out there. Well, if people like me really thought like that, at least that kid got a chance. That kid has no chance with people to think like her. But let me just break this down section by section. First, what she said, the first part. Generally speaking, politically, the same folks who use the banner of pro-life really mean pro-birth and aren't convicted enough to tell the truth. Where is the evidence for that statement? I mean, we're, we're on the crest of the 2020 presidential election. In each of the following Republican presidential party platforms, there was a solid statement for the integrity and life of the unborn. Now, Roe v. Wade, you know, that thing, that atrocity came out in 1973. So, these are the following Republican presidential platforms that had a statement concerning the dignity and sanctity of life of the unborn. 1976, 1980, 1984, 1982, 1992, 1992, 1996, 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012, and 2016. And you can bet your bottom dollar there will be one in the 2020 platform. Not a word for the dignity and life of the unborn in democratic platforms because they don't care about the unborn. You might as well call them the democratic platform. I mean, that's the same group of people that in 2012, when they were getting ready to inaugurate Barack Obama for a second term, that lied on God. Matter of fact, they kicked God out. God was not in the Democratic platform. Then some people said, oh, we need to put God back in there. 
So they had a floor vote. They voted three times. And three times got lost. And on the third time, after the third time, uh, Villa Garosa, who was chairing that vote, looked all bewildered. And the woman said, I think she said, are they going to do what they're going to do? And he, and he went on and said, okay, God's in. The vote passed. I mean, the Democratic Party had to lie to put God in the 2012 Democratic platform. Oh, man. I'm telling you. Democratic. Let me go on to the next statement that she made. And generally speaking, those are the same people who complain after the babies get here and having to use tax dollars to support them. You know, prior to the war on poverty, LBJ, where he was going to end poverty, Lyndon Baines Johnson, President, Democrat, the black household, the black two-parent household, was at least, at least 75% father and mother. I mean, I would even beg to tell you that black folks as a family, as a two-parent uh, family, and when I say two-parent family, I always mean one man and one woman. I never mean two men or two women or multiple people. The black family was better off under the segregated Jim Crow time period than they're off now, than there are now. So, like I said, prior to uh, the war on poverty, the two-parent black family was 75%. And there was a Democrat named uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan that wrote a report called The Negro Family, The Case for National Action. He, a Democrat, a fair-minded, speaking Democrat, was concerned about the condition of the black family, that the black family was in danger of being uh, destroyed because there was a 25% uh, illegitimacy rate. That, that What I mean by 25, 25% of, of children were being raised in a home where there was only one parent. 25%. And he was vilified. He was talked about by Democrats. Uh, he was, you know, he was just vilified. But he was a prophet. And nobody knew it. Because right now, in the year 2020, the two-parent man and woman black household stands at 27%. Twenty-seven percent, fifty-five years since the war on poverty, and we still have poverty. All the trillions of dollars they spent on that thing didn't satisfy anything. All the war on poverty did was kick the fam, kick the father out of the home, destroy the black family, increase poverty, increase crime, led to gang infestation in these neighborhoods, in these uh, places where, you know, actually the Democrats run the show. And what has the, uh, the Democratic Party uh, done during this time period? They've embraced homosexuality. They've embraced so-called same-sex marriage. They've embraced transgenderism. That, I mean, for those of you who don't know what that means, that's where people... Uh, deform or, or, or cut up their bodies or inject themselves with hormones to try to be the opposite set. sex. I mean, the Democratic Party has went so far as to tell little boys that they can be girls or girls they can be boys. All of these things are destructive to every race and nationality, but especially it's destructive to the black family. Um, so, you know, you know, and, 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 and I see all these Democrats, all these ones, particularly the ones that call themselves Christians, constantly lining up 
But whoever they send from Washington to be the next president, to be the next governor, and they, I never see them standing up for God. I always see them standing up for the Democratic Party, though. They, they, they are lockstep in total agreement with them. Let's see. And see, as far as we wanting um, to, hold on a second, as far as our tax dollars go, all we want is our money to be spent wisely. We don't want to waste money and we don't want to make people dependent. We don't want people sucking on the government's mammary gland for the rest of their life. We want people to be able to stand on their two feet. Now, those that need help, you help them. But you don't make people dependents. You don't treat them like spoiled six-year-olds and keep them in that condition for the rest of their life. Let me move on. And again, generally speaking, those are also the same folks who don't care if children starve, live in poverty, or substandard housing. Let me ask you a question. Where are those substandard houses at? What, what political party runs the cities that have all them substandard houses? I mean, we have... <laughs> The Democrats run the majority of these cities. The Democrats are in control of, of the, the, the school system. The Democrats are in control of all this nonsense. You know, the Democrats want us to allow illegals in. Now think about it. These people, this woman who's complaining about children starving, living in poverty, and in substandard housing, I always ask Democrats a question. If you came home from work, you brought your children home from school, you and your husband walked in the house and there was a family already in your house. Some lady was in there cooking dinner, the husband sitting down on the couch, kids over there playing. You didn't invite these folks in. You didn't let them folks in. They were just in your house. And you said, what are you doing here? And they said, oh, well, we see that you got a big house. You got plenty of room. Uh, we figured, hey, we would just come in there and join you. You know, here, I already started cooking dinner. You, you can relax. Would you let those folks stay in your house? No. None of them. Not one Democrat has ever told me they would let those folks stay in their house. Not one. Why? Because they weren't invited. Because that's your house. Because that was the sanctity of your home, and you're not going to just let anybody stay in it. So why would you let anybody just stay in your country? Why would you let somebody just come in here that doesn't belong here and suck up your resources? Why would you do it? The resources are supposed to take care of your children. These Democrat-run cities, by and large, and states, are failing. I think in Baltimore, I think I read where there's not even kid, one kid in high school that's proficient in English or math. What is this? And all these Democrat-run cities, all these politicians, do you think their kids go to those schools? Hmm? Their kids don't go to those schools. They put their kids in private schools. They put their kids in private schools and make sure their kids get a good education while your kids have to compete with folks that don't belong here, with teachers that they can't fire because they have tenure, and, and, and many of them don't care because they're going to get paid anyway, whether, you, whether your kid learns or not. And so since those Democrats, politicians, politicians by and large, I'll even say Republicans, when they put their kids in private schools, their kids are already put up on a level and in a position where they can take over for their own parents, where they're in an elite situation, where they'll be at a higher crest, where your kids are struggling just to get by, where kids that don't even belong there, where teachers don't care, and they'll be at a lower level. All these Democrats are doing is making sure that their kids are better off. Your kids are not. Otherwise, they would agree for vouchers. 
school vouchers. We pay the taxes. We pay for this stuff. They're not giving us nothing. And look, I will use this analogy. If you went to the store to buy some meat and you took the meat home and the meat was spoiled, you're done with that store more than likely. You're going to go to a store that's got good meat. You got to make sure you bring some good meat to your family. Your family won't eat no crap and you didn't spend your money on it. So why should your taxpayer money go to a school that's crap? Why shouldn't you as a parent be able to take your kid where you want to go? Why would you as a parent pay some politician to let their kid go to private school while your kid has to go to a crappy public school where they're telling you that your kid needs to stay there but their kid don't? And, and besides that, kids are from across the border that don't belong here. Why would you put up with that? And then you live in these crappy neighborhoods. And by the way, President Trump has pumped millions of dollars in opportunity zones in crappy neighborhoods to try to lift those neighborhoods up. Barack Obama could have did that. He didn't. Why not? He was a Democrat. He was in office for eight years. The first two years in office, he had complete control of the Congress and the Senate. He could have passed anything he wanted to. All he passed was that socialized medicine. I mean, you know, cash for clunkers and, and $500 million to some uh, Solyndra, some, some stupid uh, 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 solar panel company. And, of course, this, this trillion dollars in stimulus uh, of, uh, uh, what was that crap, that was supposed to help infrastructure. And folks still talking about infrastructure. Hey, dude, what? Well, I mean, the only thing I saw was some signs. You know, Barack Obama didn't do squat. Trump ushered in the greatest economy this country has seen before this virus came in. But you let the mainstream media tell you, it's nothing. So my friend sitting over here talks about this uh, a substandard housing and kids starving where this administration was doing more than any of them before. But of course, he was a conservative. Well, he's been governing as a conservative and Republican, so that doesn't count. <sighs> Let's see here. Let's see here. Okay. Or are locked up in cages. Those circumstances also lead to death. Let me remind you, because the mainstream media they lie like a dog a lot of times. Those cages we're talking about, those cages were from the Obama administration. The first pictures they show the folks in these things were from the Obama administration. Well, you guys didn't say nothing then. It didn't mean nothing to you then. But like I said, how many of you want to let folks just come in your house? How many of you, if, you want to, if you're going to be consistent, then you will let illegals just come on in your house and live. Or, you know, but you don't, if you don't want to be consistent, then you would, since they ain't in your house directly, you don't care if they sucking off the resources of folks that are less fortunate. And look, by the way, maybe some of you guys should look at other news sources that might help your reasoning, that might help your ability to think. And I'm not talking about Fox. Let me give you some news sources that will help you. You know, getting away from CNN and MSNBC for a little while. And I'm not talking about going to Fox. Just something that might help you see things a little bit differently. Newsmax. It's a conservative site. But I believe in verifying information I get from whatever site it is. OAN or One America News. It's another site. Another conservative site. I mean, you need to balance this stuff out. When you watch ABC, CBS, and NBC, and MSNBC, and, and, and CNN, and all those folks all the time, you know, your brain can get a little screwy. So one, American News, Epoch Times, that's another good source. And One News Now, which is a Christian-based news source. Look, the bias of the mainstream media should be evident to everyone. I mean, for the first year at least uh, of the Trump administration. They were talking about 
how mentally unfit he was. They had, I remember there was one thing about all these, these uh, psychiatrists, none of them examined him, was saying he was unfit for office. And you get all this crap, and, and it's still constantly going on. Yet, anyone, any honest person could see that Uncle Joe done not only missed a step, he done missed a staircase a few times. He done made more uh, gaffes than is allowable for anyone. He's been in a situation where he didn't even know where he was and talking. Yet, I never hear the news sources um, talk about his mentality. I never, I mean, if anything, uh, CNN and all these folks are sitting around there talking about how dare you question his mentality. Now, the man is, will be older than Ronald Reagan was when he left office, if he gets into office. And, and I wonder, is this the best uh, Democrats can do? Is this the best they can do to bring in a man that looks like he's you know, ready for the old folks home, that isn't that sharp with it right now. And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm being serious. But even if that's the best a Democrat could do, where's the unbiased news media? This is why I say you got to look at other sources. You look at the man. You listen to the man without a teleprompter. And you pay attention to him. And you should be able to see what I can see. try to get done with this. Going back to her final statement. Thus my question, hard question, answers are rarely part of the thinking and someone who is simply driven by binary politics and caring about a candidate winning. Those questions weren't hard at all. Well, yes, I care about a candidate winning. I've seen what's been happening in this country. I see what's happening in this country. You know, my focus, even though I believe in uh, economical prosperity, my number one focus is on moral pro uh, prosperity, if you like, moral responsibility. I don't think God will bless any country that will just destroy his creation. Defame him. I don't think God blesses anybody like that. All Christians are supposed to trust God. It, it, it amazes me uh, to read this woman sit over here and, and, and state um, that conservatives or Republicans, you know, want the baby to live, but then we don't care if it dies. That it, this woman knows that I have been on the forefront of trying to defend the unborn for a long time. For a long time. And obviously I'm not alone. There's many, many of us. And this person, like I said, had demonstrated absolutely no compassion for the unborn in her statements at all. That mime attributed to John MacArthur is spot on. If you are a Christian and you believe what the Bible says and it says in Psalms 139 and 13 that he created us in the womb that we are the uh, the work of his of his hands that he created us you know in secret not the I mean the act of procreation was the act that he used to, to get it going, but he did the molding, he did the creating, he did the putting together. And anyone that is willing to accept babies being created by God, being torn apart limb by limb in the womb, and babies can feel the pain too. These are not people that honor God. Jesus said in John 14 and 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. These folks that claim they love Jesus, but they don't keep his commandments. They don't attempt to keep his commandments. They voluntarily submit themselves 
to forces that are in allegiance with Satan himself. Abortion is murder. Abortion and those who advocate it are enemies of Christ. You have to ask yourself if you are a child of Christ or an enemy of Christ. The Bible says that judgment starts in the house of God. <laughs> those of us that know more are accountable for more. There's no sense in making excuses. I mean, because if we lie to God, you know, actually we're just lying to ourselves because he knows the truth. And for those folks to talk about, well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. And he said that the heart is dishonest and can't be trusted. The best thing that you can do, if you haven't done it, is to repent. Ask for forgiveness to the Lord Jesus Christ. Submit yourself to him. Trust in him to make a difference. Trust in him. But whatever you should do, you need to stop supporting those folks that are enemies of Christ. I'm not telling people they need to be Republicans or conservatives. I'm telling folks they need to trust God and stay away from his enemies. This is Sam Tolley, and I'm out.